I'm gonna be very honest with everyone. Shao is a very decent DPS, but definitely not broken. Hey, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about Xiao and especially about Xiao's weakness and issue. Now, a lot of you might be thinking that I've been talking about energy recharge issue on Xiao because his elemental bursts have 70 energy cost and in hinder his uptime unless you build energy recharge. But it actually go much more than that. In fact, we're gonna start with the most basic damage. Now Xiao's damage is good. But probably not as good as you might have hoped it or imagined. So Xiao jumps have a low and a high damage. When you jump and immediately spam left click, this is a low plunge damage. As you can see, we didn't jump very high here. But in the second part of here, you can see that I waited a bit before left clicking, which means I jumped it a lot higher. And you can see the damage number is higher, and this is a high plunge damage. Now what's interesting is that you actually don't want to wait until the peak before you left click. Here you can see that I do a low plunge in 60 frames and in comparison for a high plunge here it took me 78 frames and the math just turned out that doing low plunge spam here is better. Basically that just means that you have a 15 frames window of error uh, in order for your high plunge to do more damage than your low plunge or if you don't speak frames uh, you have a 0.25 second window of error. So if you wait too long on your high plunge, you're actually going to do less damage than spamming your left click button and doing low plunge. AKA jumping and then spamming attack is mostly better unless you can time for frame perfect high plunge. Also plunge attack are supposed to do damage if you hit them on the way down. But here you can see that I'm, I'm clearly on top of the Fatui, but I still only did the AOE plunge damage. Other thing about Xiao include that you can sneak a normal attack in after you land by spamming left click as you can see here. And finally the jetpack combo that was found by Fearcrafter in Cushing Main. And you just do a normal attack followed by a charge attack and then cancel out of that charge attack by doing a jump punch. And by far this is the best way to do damage. Oh also as a minor thing you can actually jump E and then plunge without jumping. Now we talked a lot about how to do damage on Xiao, but what about how good is the damage on Xiao? Is it good? Is it... Mm, let's see. And for that purpose, after collecting data, I generated a graph for you to visualize. So let me go ahead and explain this graph before we dive into it. Moving on, the x-axis is of course artifact quality, meaning as we get perfect to absolutely perfect artifact moving to the right, uh, our damage is of course going to increase. And the y-axis going up is of course our damage. And what this graph is comparing as you can tell from the top left is the Luke Vaporize in comparison to Xiao uh, in terms of damage. And when I say the Luke Vaporize, I do not include Xingxiu damage. Uh, Xingxiu is just there for the Hydro reaction so that the Luke can proc Vaporize. And so all of these is just the damage that the Luke himself is outputting. And as for Xiao, this is his damage in his elemental burst uh, using the highest damage combo which is the jetpacking combo I showed you a couple minutes ago. Uh, in terms of the artifact, this also assume that you have infinite energy as well. So you do not build any energy recharge, you do not build energy hourglass, instead you use attack percent here. Uh, you do not use any energy recharge weapon as you can see the graph is comparing between J-Wing, uh, Deathmatch and Black Cliff. Uh, Black Earth is assumed to be free stack with the attack. And if you're using the energy recharge weapon, even the 5 star one, which is the sky worm, it actually gonna appear somewhere here at the very very bottom of the graph, even lower than Black Cliff. But as you can see in the graph, even if we assume that Xiao have zero energy issue, zero uptime issue, and doing the best combo, he still get out damaged by the loot, but not by a significant amount. In fact, they're very 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 close. And I think being able to do the same damage as a Vaporize Deluke is actually really good. After all, Deluke is like the top of the DPS. Except if only it was so easy to do so. You might be able to tell where this video is going. Being able to do the same damage as Deluke Vaporization, but you have to jump through so many so many hoops to do so. Aside from your HP being drained during your elemental burst, and the high energy requirement from your elemental burst, and even more than that. 
Remember the previous graph assumed you're doing the best combo which is the normal attack into charge attack into a low plunge cancel or the jetpack combo. But you can see that's not very practical to do so because here you can see in the clip that the agent is constantly being knocked back. He's being knocked back over and over and over where I can even follow up with a normal attack. That doesn't just mean that you're losing damage. In fact, you're losing support capability. Imagine you drop a Bennett's ult under Shao and then you knock the enemy outside of the Bennett circle. Now you don't get the Bennett attack buff anymore. This is the same thing for something like Zhongli tablet, something for Albedo, Fingy, the elevator. Knocking the enemy away just make you lose so much. And that pretty much tied to the topic of how Xiao doesn't really utilize support well. Between support like Xing Xiu, where he doesn't really normal attack and cannot utilize Xing Xiu to the fullest, similar to Ganyu, to using Bennett, where you plunge outside of his attack buff circle and you can no longer get the attack buff uh, that we just described it. And to the fact that you absolutely need to bring a healer because of the HP drain factor. And currently in the game, there's like four healers you can choose. You have Jean, which is the more obvious choice, being a Anemo and a healer, but it's a five-star character. And then you have Chi Chi, which is also great, but Chi Chi does not generate energy, any energy. Similarly, Barbara also does not generate any energy, and so your only choice left then is Diona, which it's actually kind of okay because she have a shield as well, and shield really really help with Xiao. Being in the air actually means it is harder to position and see what's coming for you because there's no air dodging in this game. So your option is either you can jump out of the attack and not do your plunge and thus losing damage or you can plunge and take damage which on top of the HP draining factor of Xiao make him very very fragile. And let me demonstrate that exactly by replaying the clip just now. You can see that I got hit while in air so because you can't dodge in air there's nothing I can do. Surely I could have stayed it on the ground and avoided the attack first, but that means I'm not attacking and I'll be losing damage. Now let's go back to the team building issue. Aside from just bringing a healer, you're most likely going to have to bring a enamel battery because of Xiao's ridiculous 70 energy cost on his elemental burst. If you have Jean, you might be able to get away with doing both with just Jean, but it does require high energy recharge. So for most people, this might be Sucrose. Uh, that means that out of your four party slot, three of them will lock in because you have to bring Sucrose and then you have to bring a healer, maybe Diona as we have mentioned. So you only have one slot for the rest of your stuff, you know, potentially like official for slightly more damage. So on the topic of energy recharge, let me demonstrate how much energy he need. Here you can see that I have 130 energy recharge on my shell. And well, even after casting Super Superos E, a Jin Yi, and two Shao Yi, this is how much my alts, uh, my elemental burst meter has filled up. Also, Shao's elemental skill do not generate any particle during your elemental burst, so you always want to save them until you're out of your elemental burst. Now, fortunately, that uh, because of double enamel, if you don't cast your elemental skill during your elemental burst then you pretty much always have two charges back when you're out of your elemental burst. So the question becomes, let's say you do two Shao's E out of elemental burst and you do two Sucrose E, which could come from uh, a sacrificial weapon or the sacrificial fragment, which is the book, or you have a constellation one, which gives you a extra charge. Keep in mind that this only gives you the charge for the first time then how much energy recharge do you need for your Xiao Ults to come back up? And the answer is around 160 to 170 for energy recharge, which is actually still a decent amount. And if you're running Jean or Venti instead of Sucrose, then you actually need to aim for about 180 to 190 energy recharge in order to fill your elemental burst back up, which is giving up a lot of damage on Xiao. Now, the good news is if you're fortunate like me who have a sacrificial lens, uh, maybe potentially a high refinement, you can actually lower that number all the way to about 130, which because the lens already gives you like 30%, mean that you do not need to build any energy recharge. You can just use the lens and go full damage. 
Now, if you have a very strong Shao who can potentially end the fight in less than 2 elemental bursts, you actually don't really need any energy recharge at all. This is because the first time you cast your elemental burst, you can actually pre-cast your elemental skill to regenerate the energy. Here you can see I start with a Venti's elemental skill followed by 2 quick Shao's elemental skill before I use the elemental burst on Shao. And then by the time the particle come to me, my energy is already consumed it. And you can see that the second time I can do it again and this instantly fill up my entire burst meter. And this allow me to do a burst again. Know that after the second time, your elemental burst meter will go all the way to zero. So you cannot do this trick anymore and then at this point you have to rely on energy recharge. With that being said, let's just quickly go over the Shao build and team recommendation that I will do. Uh, for a weapon, I think Aeolius Lens is one of the better ones unless you have either a 5 star weapon. The deathmatch and the black cliff in terms of damage they are the same. However, you do have to keep in mind that about the energy recharge value that I just told you about, which is 160 to 170 if you're running sucrose uh, with a sacrificial fragment. Waving on to Artifact, uh, very very standard, you run 2 Gladiator and 2 VV set with the following main stat and sub stat and display on the screen. Now what's interesting to you to know is that for your Goblet slot, running attack might actually be better over enamel damage depending on what you have. The reason is because the enamel damage bonus is the same category as your uh, elemental burst damage bonus so they're additive as well as your first talent which gives you the 25% bonus here or 15% on average and so you might actually run into a rare case where you have overstacked the damage bonus uh, and you don't have enough attack uh, here I'm running a attack hourglass and if I was running an energy recharge instead then I might not have enough uh, attack now the easy way to tell if you should be running a demo goblet or a attack goblet is just to look at your stat. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this uh, white number which is A05 and you're gonna multiply it by all the damage bonus you have. So for example, I have 15% from the uh, BB2 set and then at talent level 6, I have a 77%. And finally, uh, my first ascension give me 15% on average. So in total, I have 107%. So what I will do is I will multiply A05 by 1.07, and then I'll check if that number is bigger than the green number. In my case, it is not, so I'm better to run a Nemo uh, Goblet. However, if you are running something like a energy recharge, uh, sense, then your green number might be very very low. In this case, because the multiplied number which is A05 times 1.07 is bigger than 406 which is the green number, you should be running a attack goblet instead. But if you don't have a good attack goblet then it is fine. Running a anemo damage bonus is pretty much the same thing so you can just run the one with better substat as well. Now, as for team composition, I would pretty much always, always, always put Sucrose in with Sacrificial Codex because of the energy. If you have Gene and you have really, really high energy recharge, uh, then you could get away with Gene. But for reference, I have 160 energy recharge and I'm running a R5 Filmonious Lens and running Gene is not enough. I'll just tell you that right now. Uh, you could run Gene Venti, that would be enough. Uh, then you don't have to run Sucrose, but that's like free 5 star character so it's hard to recommend this unless you really really have it. Uh, if you do run Sucrose however, then you're gonna have to bring a healer. And the healer of choice is gonna be Diona because Diona have shield and generate energy. For your final slot, I recommend Zhongli, uh, Albedo or Fischl. Uh I know people try to run Bennett but because again that you knock yourself out of the Bennett elemental burst. Uh, it is harder for me to recommend Bennett but he is okay as well. Otherwise the other character are all kind of meh. As a final thought I think that Shao is a average or I would say decent 
a uh, five star DPS character, but he's definitely not broken as many people might have claimed. Uh, being able to match the loot vaporize damage is very very nice, but there's a lot of lot of barrier for you to get there. So realistically, you're probably looking at 20 to 30 percent lower damage than a the loot vaporize, which is still good and is still fine because the loot vaporize for the longest time has been the top DPS of the game. And right now, it's still only outdone by a really really well and optimized playstyle Ganyu. The Luke Vaporize is still the most consistent uh, DPS comp in the game so right now. So being able to match that is actually like a really good point about Xiao. Xiao also does really really well against big shield enemy. Much better than the Luke in that regard. So that's another plus for him. He's definitely very decent but I don't think he's a must pull. I think going through all the hustle with energy recharge, uh, doing a plunge attack just to do like 20 to 30 percent less damage than the Luke Vaporize, where the Luke Vaporize is like you just you just press button and you do damage. It's not really a justifiable a must pull comparatively to Ganyu, where Ganyu have really really high ceiling. Uh, Xiao definitely does not have that. Now I can say confidently, if you do like the playstyle, if you like the character, he is indeed a really really good pull. His Japanese voice actor is Kirito after all. If you're not too convinced, I found this thread from a Chinese whale who have C6 Shao, uh, level 90 J wing sphere, whatever this can call in English, at Refine 3. Uh, and he made some really good comment, and most noticeably, it's Shao feel kind of really bad to play because of all the knockback, and so having to chase after Moth feel really bad. Uh, on top of that, Shao's uh, C6 wow allowed him to spam his elemental skill, which is his E. Uh, because of all the camera angles actually feel really hard to use and it get really really dizzy. Uh, you have to constantly flick your camera back and forth to hit the mob. Uh, even then because of the auto targeting in Genshin Impact, uh, sometimes you auto target some wrong enemy and then yeah uh, you, you fly off to the wrong direction. At the end, he pretty much just say that no matter how you pair him, uh, you can replace, uh, he doesn't do as much damage as other character, you can replace him with any other team and it does better. Mono visibility at the end here, uh, he's a completely skippable, just wait for hotel. This is from a Chinese C6 whale. I'll link this thread in the description if you're interested to see and maybe Google Translate will say something similar. I don't know, I'm natively Chinese so I can read all of these completely. I know some of you sometimes like to hear other languages, specifically when I speak in either Chinese or Japanese. So I'm gonna end the video with the famous saying of Kirito from Sora Online. Starburst stream! Hello, Jajin.